all so excited about today's book. We're talking about No Problem Parenting. This is a really great book for you know anybody who is a parent and is having troubles or struggles, challenges, whatever word you choose with your child. I know I could have used this book about 30 something years ago you know, when my kids were growing up, but I didn't have it then, but it's available to you now. And I'm gonna be interviewing you, uh, one of the authors today, her name is Elvira de Bridget. It's super excited to have you today, Elvira, to talk about this book, No Problem Parenting, and your part in it. So welcome to the show. Good to have you here today. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. You know, I, I what I love about this um, book is that really, you know, parents, there's there's a lot of there are a lot of books out there about parenting, parenting skills, what to do, what not to do, and all that. But there's still there's not enough. And I say that because we don't know whose story is gonna be the story or the message that's gonna impact us the most. I could read like back in the day when I was young, there was a book out there by uh, you know Dr. Spock, and like he was the world-renowned parenting expert out there. But since then, there have been a lot of discoveries and things that people have discovered that you know maybe a lot of his techniques still work today, but a lot of them don't work today. And so it's through our trial and error, through our expertise, you know, through our own journeys that we're able to impart the different things that can help with children. So again, what I love about this book is that we get to see a whole you know vast array of different ideas on you know what par parenting is all about and how we can help you know parents I say we I'm not in the book y'all okay I'm not in the book but you know publishing the book and, and through the stories it's really uh, the stories and the messages is how we're able to get that message out there now your uh, chapter title in the book is this one really resonated with me a lot by the way three keys to connecting with our with your daughters to create that bond of deep lasting trust you know i have a daughter she's almost 39 years old now you know i, I love her dearly and you know, we've had our fair share of challenges you know when she was younger when she got you know teenage years even you know in her 20s and 30s and now you know she's in her late 30s and things are shifting and we're creating a uh, like that you know that bond like you're talking about so i would love for you to you know, talk about your chapter like what is it all about what do you you know learn teaching us you know through reading your chapter in the book mm. well i should say i focus in that chapter and in my work mostly on preteens and teens and um and just yeah helping mothers and daughters that's such an important relationship and it can be so strife, <laughs> filled with strife um, during those years. It's very common. This is how I really got to this with my struggles with my daughter, who is now 30. And also working as a homeschool teacher and coach, I saw a lot of times that families who were so close, but then as they got to the preteen and teen years, they felt like they couldn't homeschool together anymore. But, and it's natural for teens to want their own space. So I just started exploring that more and more and wanted to help help people in that situation. That's awesome. I, I love how um, you know, it's our, a lot of times our own experiences are is what leads us to what we're doing today. And, and so this, um, your, your daughter, you said she's 30? Did you say she's 30? Yeah, next month. Next month, 30. Okay, so so she's 30 and now it's going into like that next decade for her. Also, you know, next decade with her, you know, you as her parent. And what kind of shifts have you seen within yourself, within yourself, that have helped to strengthen that bond, that relationship with your daughter? Hmm, that's a great question. Because it also just points to the fact like, yeah, this is a lifelong journey. So even if you're you know, struggling now with your child, whatever age they are, just try to take the big view picture down the road when they're 30, you know, what is it going to be like? And so right now she and I have a great, like, it's more of a friendship, you know, like there's, she, she will still come to me with questions sometimes, like health questions and I don't know, work balance, life questions, but, um, it just feels much more comfortable and I have learned to really let her be the author of her own life, right? So I'm not trying to, you know, impart more than just like wisdom that she can take it or leave it kind of. 
that um, being the author of her own life, I think that's an important piece there because a lot of times you know, we, we want for our kids a better life than we had, but it still is their own lives. And I think that's, that's such a, a big like realization to come to that, that this is their life. And while we want to um, help them, you enable them is actually what ends up happening is we end up in enabling them. And I, I remember, um, you know, somebody I've known along my journey that they, uh, the parents helped them so much that when the parents passed away, they didn't know what to do. So eventually, most likely the parents will pass away first. So we have to get to that point where we allow them to to live their own lives. And I say, allow them. I mean, they're going to live their own lives anyway. So really what's the shift that we have to make well, in ourselves, right? So what's your thought? Yeah. On that? Well, like I said, I work mostly with parents with teens. And so then it's a little tricky because the children are not quite ready to go and live their own life, but they feel like they're ready. Yes. They're their, it's that whole transition that can last for like 10 years or more. So, um, so it's definitely a balance as a parent to figure out how, like I said, to create this bond of trust, but um, not be overbearing. There's a whole dance there. Yeah, big time, big time. We're talking about the book uh, right now. It's called No Problem Parenting. You know, this is the launch date of the book and you can get a copy at our website at actiontakerspublishing.com slash NPP, which stands for No Problem Parenting. Again, it's actiontakerspublishing.com slash NPP. Go ahead over there and get your copy of the book. Plus a lot of the authors have given away free gifts. So get cash in on your free gifts over there as well. We're speaking to one of the authors today, Elvira de Bridget. And Elvira, um, um, you mentioned you're working with like teenagers. What is that like? Because, you know, I don't know, like my daughters, my son and daughter, they're older now, you know, they're not teenagers anymore, but I imagine things have changed a lot just since they were in school 20, Oh, I can't believe they're celebrating their 20 year reunions, you know, like for a little more than 20 years, but tw in the, in the last 20 years, I'm, there have been so many changes and social yeah. media plays a huge part because there was no social media when they, there was MySpace, yeah. but other than the MySpace, there was nothing, <laughs> right? Like that, yeah. that was what they went on. So yeah. So yeah. talk to, talk to us about that. This is a great question. And I have experienced both ends of the spectrum, if you could say, because I have a daughter who's 30 who didn't have the social media as much when she was growing up and then I have a son now who's 15 who is, spends a lot of time on his computer and it's a real struggle for parents these days whether it's social media or gaming um, and it can really affect you know brain development and and relationships it's it's really hard to and I think parents you know have to get clear on what they want for their children and to be able to express it, um, not in like a, this is the rule and da da da, but to express the concern and to come to get together with their team to figure out you know what's gonna work in their family to, to have a healthy balanced life. What's been that um, for you? What has been like the, the thing that you do in your family to help your, especially the 15 year old to learn how to have a balanced life. Like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have discussions about, you know, what is the effect on your body and your brain if you're spending too many hours on a device, on a screen? And um, what are the other options? And, you know, what are your, your strengths and your talents and skills? And how can you use that in different ways? And recognizing you know that they are looking for some fulfillment and they're getting some fulfillment online and so recognizing that and then saying okay and there's other ways too so i think that's a big deal right there like right looking at the the fact that they are getting yeah. some sort of fulfillment i think figuring out what that fulfillment is and and then how do you translate that to the real world or you know, the world outside of the games, the world outside of the gaming and, you know, playing, having that computer time and stuff. So that that's awesome. I, I love that you do that because it made me think about even my own self, you know, some of the things that I do online that I could be doing you know, outside that I could get the same exact fulfillment on the outside and not online. So 
Awesome. You know, thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I'm curious, you know, relate in relation to you know, the mother daughter relationship. You know, one thing is, you know, they, they tell us that like we all get on the same cycle. So as a mother, you know, having a daughter, you know, how do we uh, navigate that? Because if you got two like, ah, you know, hellions going on in the same household, like, how do you keep the peace in that relationship? And it, you know, just, I would love to hear you. How do you keep the peace in that relationship? Yeah, well, I think it's really important for women in general to really understand their hormonal cycle through the month, because it's not just about, you know, PMS and your period, but there's throughout the whole month, there's different ups and downs that happen. And we, people who teach about this, we talk about the four seasons and how those are, we cycle through those within a month. And so being able to know that about yourself and and then share that with your daughter is really empowering. And that's something that I have had great experiences with, with them helping people learn about it, doing mother-daughter circles to talk about that. And it helps just open up conversations. And and yeah, that time when you're both like really you know, wound up, it might be PMS, um, that is also an important uh, time to say, oh, I need to take time to myself slow down and um, so you can help each other recognize that and that can help to keep the peace. It's also a time of really being more intuitive. So those things that might be bothering you during that time of your month are important things to note. Maybe journal about them but instead of like, you know, growling at everyone about them. Just reflect on them and if they are still bothering you, you know, a few days from then, it's good to bring it up for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I was I was kind of chuckling there, remembering you know some of the some of the things I said and did that really I I didn't feel like I had any control over them because it was like my hormones were doing all the work. But you know that's really that's just an excuse because I still do have control over the actions that I take. You know to take full responsibility for that. So what is uh, one thing that you would like the readers you know to take away after reading you know the book No Problem Parenting? By the way, you can get your copy at Action Takers Publishing dot com slash NPP. So what is something you would like the readers to take away, you know, from reading that book? Well, this book is going to be great because it's got so many different perspectives in there and each family is unique. So I think there'll be something for everyone in there. And just, I guess the biggest takeaway would be you don't have to do it by yourself. Don't feel alone. You have a lot of support and this book will show you different places to find that support. Awesome. I love that. You know, thanks so much, Elvira, for being part of this book and I'm looking forward to you know, getting the message out there and helping people to just you know, find different tools, techniques that they can use in their families, you know, to become, you know, what you know, they see as you know, better parents, because really it does start at the home. It all starts at the home and the child is born. They come home from the hospital. You know, that's where everything starts. So some of these um, chapters here are going to be able to help you to move forward with that. So get your copy of No Problem Parenting at Action takerspublishing.com slash NPP. Looking forward to having you, you know, give some feedback on the book and what you think about it. And thanks so much for tuning in. Elvira, thanks for being part of this book and some of our other books as well. Truly appreciate you, the work you're doing. Oh, before we go, shoot, I forgot to mention, you can connect with Elvira at heroinejourneyguide.com. That's H-E-R-O-I-N-E journeyguide.com. And also don't forget to... Go, go I was going to say, I'm also available at the pubertydoula.com. The pubertydoula.com. I didn't, I didn't get that typed in. So you guys figure it out. Pubertydoula, D-O-U-L-A.com, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, go check it out. You need any help in that area, please go connect with Elvira there and make, make waves inside your own family. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you at the next interview.